All right, guys, I'm gonna show you the exact process I go through to print my photos using Photoshop before I send it to my printer. So these are like all the settings and everything that you guys want, some of you wanted to know. I'm gonna kind of walk you through that here. So we're here on the home screen of Photoshop. I'm gonna go right over to new file. I'm gonna open that up. And right here, these is, this is all the templates that I use. These are the different sizes that I have. So like six by four, 18 by 12, stuff like that, 24 by 18. And we're gonna go, we're gonna make a 12 by 18. Okay, and what you're gonna do is this, we're gonna use a portrait photo for this. So the width is gonna be 12.2 by 18.2. We wanna have 0.2 because this is the bleed edge that goes around the entire print. We wanna make it 2.2 inches larger than the actual photo so that when the aluminum expands in the heat, it still remains on the paper. If not, you'll have a white border around it because the, the metal expanded too far past the image. So whatever you do, just put 0.2 inches larger than any size that you're printing. I'm gonna have my have this set to inches right here. You can select pixels if you want, centimeters, millimeters, whatever you'd like. I always use inches, makes it easy. Resolution is 300 pixels per inch. Color mode, RGB color, 8-bit. Background content's white. And then these are the two color profiles, RGB and square pixels. I don't really have a reason for choosing any of these. It's just these, these like more advanced settings are what was recommended to me and I've been using them since I started. It's been very helpful. So I've had no issues with it. We're gonna click create. And then we have this white template here. We're just gonna go to file, click place embedded. Then I have a photo here that's gonna load places it right in, I'm gonna expand it to make sure it covers the entire thing and fits. Click the checkbox. And now this photo is actually ready to print if we wanted to. Then I'm gonna to go to layers though, and I do this with every photo. Uh, make sure your screen brightness is turned down a little bit so that it's not too bright because when you print something, it's gonna look darker than what you saw on your screen. So turn the screen brightness down to compensate for that. I'm gonna go down to this little circle. I'm gonna click it and I'm just gonna to go to brightness and contrast. And what I like to do is turn up the brightness on most photos just a little bit. It depends on the photo. You're gonna do more or less depending on the original photo that you're using. And then contrast is the same thing. You can play around with that. Um, if you wanna change the look of a photo, you can mess with it with that. Um, use it accordingly, depends on the photo. This one, I'm not really gonna to do too much with it because I don't need to. It's already bright and the contrast is good. We'll just leave it at that. And then another thing I like to do go back to that circle, and to change some of the colors, I go to Hue Saturation. What this does basically is, if you're printing with something like Beauty Sub, sometimes the whites and the oranges can print like more vibrant than you want them to. And so, you can go right to this little hand arrow, click it, and you get this dropper tool. And sometimes they go like to an orange or a red, and you just go over to Saturation after clicking on that color on the picture, come over to saturation, you can just turn it up or down however you'd like. So you could make this look like that, or you could turn it up and make this super colored, whatever you want. I'm gonna leave it normal again. This photo's already edited, so I don't really need to do anything with it. And that is all I do for editing photos for the most part. I don't do like any other, I don't mess with any other settings or any other tools in here. I pretty much just leave it at this. When that's ready, I go over to file, and I go down to print. Now we see we have this Photoshop print settings open and you can see that our image fits inside this box right here. If you're new to this, you probably won't have it fitting inside this box. So here's how we're gonna, we're gonna make that for you. We're gonna go to print settings. And once this opens up, we're gonna have access to more advanced settings. So what we're gonna do here is as you can see, I have this document size set to 12 by 18. What we're gonna do is we're gonna, to make that is we're gonna go to custom paper size and right here is where we're gonna name it. So for all my 12 by 18s that I print, we have it right here. And then we're going to, for the paper width and paper height, whatever size you're printing with, we're gonna make it one inch larger than whatever it is. So for a 12 by 18, we're gonna make the paper width and height 13 by 19. Okay, this gives it one inch around the paper. When you're printing, it just keeps it off of the edges. Um, it makes it safe for printing, basically. You're gonna, you're gonna, when you do that, just make sure it's set in inches, unless you wanna do it in millimeters, you can 
figure out those measurements for yourself. And then you're just gonna click save and it'll save it to this list right here. You're gonna click okay. And then you're gonna go to settings right here. This drop down menu will have everything you just saved in that other box, they'll be right here to choose from. So 12 by 18, and we're gonna be all set. And it will now print in the portrait style on your paper going this way. It shows you right here the direction and where it will be located when it prints. Now if you wanted to change this to make it sideways to save paper, this is what I normally do, make it the opposite direction. So we did a 12 by 18, make an 18 by 12. Just switch it, or you can just click landscape and portrait. I just have separate measurements. This makes it easier for me to know. And you click OK, and now you can see it's sideways on the paper, and it takes up less, basically. So we're going to go back, and I'm just going to change it back to 12 by 18, because that's what we're using right now. Then roll paper, you have these options. I always have it set to roll paper. Um, your, your computer should recognize that it's connected to the printer. If it is, everything will be all set. You'll have a checkbox here. There won't be any, you'll have like warning signs if it's not. And I have Chrome Lux Media Type. This is what I made on my printer. You do this in your settings. It's not specifically for Chrome Lux. This is just what I named it. I could have named it literally anything. Um, if you use DS Transfer Paper, you could use something, you could use one of these settings. I use Chrome Lux. And um, if it's not connecting, you can click Acquire Info. It'll connect to it. And then for down here, I choose off, no color adjustment, and then max quality, and then high speed. These are the three you want for printing one single photo or really for printing all your photos. Now, if you wanted to send them to a new page where you could put multiple pictures on one to print at the same time, you're just gonna click Layout Manager and it'll open a new window. Then you're gonna go to Preferences uh, in that new window and you'll have the same print page and you'll just click off no color and max quality. Make sure to print with this either way, adjust the settings for this. Okay, we're gonna click okay. Now we're back to this. Color handling, Photoshop manages color, printer profile, Epson SC500, F500, general purpose rigid. So these are going to be your profiles. I always print with this because um, I don't use Chromalux. This has worked really well for me. If you have the Chromalux uh, profile, you'll be able to choose that there and you can use that if you'd like. Mess around with different ones and see which ones give you the best options. Normal printing, relative color metric, and then black point compensation. I always have this checked. I don't know why, but I just, I use it. I watched a bunch of videos when I was getting my settings all set and done uh, early on when I got started and I was told to use this and it's worked well ever since. You can mess with it on dark photos, it does make a difference, you can see it in the black sometimes. Brighter photos, it doesn't. I just leave it checked all the time and I've had zero issues with, with black or any photos really. So, I leave it. These are all the settings that I use. The last thing you're gonna do is just click print and you should be good to go. Um, if you're printing wireless, it's gonna take longer to print. So connect a cable to it, a LAN cable if you'd like. It'll print a lot faster. I. I printed probably the last two years wireless for almost everything, and I regretted it. it wasted a lot of time. It would have been much faster if I connected. Um, and that's about it, guys. I hope this helps.